Thank you, Mayor, for being with us today. What is, for the Mayor's message, what, are, what is one of the most, most pressing items before you this week? There's a number of them, Natalia, but what I want to uh, use this time is to explain this. Currently, we are um, working through drafting the Mayor's proposal of the budget to the Council. Uh, I am looking forward to have a State of the City address scheduled for May 10. It'll be a special City Council meeting, um, assuming, you know, right now we're communicating with the Council President, see how we can set that up. But ideally, May 10th, where I pre present the Mayor's version of the budget and do my official State of the City at that point. And working through that process with putting the Mayor's uh, proposal of the budget together, um, at this point right now in the game has been the most pressing. There are a lot of needs as far as what we need to meet and uh, at the uh, city level department standpoint uh, to meet. In our budget process, departments submit their version of the budget. And then I, in that process, I met with every department. We've combed over their requests. While at the same time, I've been waiting on revenue projections for the next fiscal year so that I can balance priorities with what our revenue capacity is. Um, and that's been quite the challenge because, uh, you know, without getting too much into the details, uh, we have a structure internally that um, uh, a practice that that doesn't necessarily allow us to effectively navigate in that way, which establishes a degree of uncertainty. And when there's uncertainty, I have to be as conservative as possible. And so that means that my version of the budget is going to include uh, first focusing on positions that are severely underfunded uh, so that we can solve um, and cl close our retention gap as much as possible. Because uh, as you know, when folks leave positions for other communities, um, that uh, impacts services um, and so forth. So uh, year one for me, I I've inherited what I've inherited. I've only been here for about five months now. So year one is going to be focused on uh, you know, uh, scaling up positions that are severely underfunded. Year two will focus on scaling up capacity, uh, departments that are working under capacity um, as far as uh, uh, people ability is concerned. And then year three, you know, uh, we can talk about what benefits would look like for those departments that are doing the important work. Uh, but within that three year period, uh, there's a lot of internal changes that are happening so that we can better uh, financially manage and as well as financially forecast our position and pivot in areas where we need to to do the investments and improve the quality of life in our city. Um, so May 10, hopefully um, the state of the city address will go more into de detail on that. Uh, and that impacts everything, Natalia. So when you when we talk about public safety and education and uh, economic development and uh, all these other things that all these other community priorities we want to see uh, funded through our local government to provide community service. Um, you know, what we're doing internally to hit our targets is, is critical. And that's where uh, the city of Hoyok is weak currently and has been weak for a very long time. Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> infrastructure. Infrastructure, yes. Oh, so like we, all right, that's a perfect example. So infrastructure and uh, public investments, um, Department of uh, Public Works, DPW, we have city engineers. We have, it's almost like a good problem to have. We have money uh, through a wide range of resources, whether if it's ARPA, Community Development Block Grant, CPA, um, and other funding sources and grants that we've been able to leverage. Um, capacity has been the issue. We've been, um, our city engineers retiring. We um, have a candidate and we're just waiting for the official acceptance. And that candidate's gonna come in and, and you know, again, there's that turnover and, and she's gonna have to get her feet wet and, and pick up the pieces of where the previous engineer left off. And there's capacity issues there because uh, the previous engineer was juggling about 70, 80 projects for one project manager. 
And so we're trying to, you know, in our version of the budget, we're going to be as creative as, as, as possible to be sure that we're able to uh, keep, have the capacity to keep up with projects. Um, uh, so even with the degree of uncertainty, we're scaling up, uh, but also there's, there's hope, there's light at the end of the tunnel that make me feel good that things are, uh, may not be as, as bad as what we might not know. <laughs> Uh, because for the first time in years, the city of Hoyoke um, has a, a positive balance of certified free cash. We've been negative three, negative 400,000. Um, we got certified at 2.3 million. 1.5 million of that has to get transferred over and live in the uh, dedicated marijuana stabilization account. That's a whole other story. But that difference is our flexibility for one-time investments to strategically help us build up. Um, and we'll share a little bit about that at the State of the City. Um, you, um, our levy uh, uh, ceiling, um, be, between our levy ceiling and our levy limit, there's some excess capacity there, even though you know I'm trying my best to plan for not tapping into that excess capacity. So we're not doing too much of any of an impact to the tax rate, but it just feels good as a manager to know that if we need it, it's there that we can leverage. And also the, the target number we're, we're focusing that we're budgeting for for fiscal year 23 doesn't include um, uh, what I know is a, you know, a great deal of new growth revenue potential. Apparently the city of Holyoke, the practice here is they don't know what those new growth revenue potential is until we set the tax rate, which is backwards, but we'll get there. Um, uh, but to know that there's a degree of new growth and also the hospital that's being built, the behavioral health hospital, that's gonna bring in additional 1.5 million of tax revenue. We're not, my budget's not anticipating that either, which makes me feel good to know that that revenue is there for when we plan for fiscal year 24, which is really gonna be my year. Um, right now I'm operating within a previous administration's budget that they put together. And then I've only been here for five months. So I have to do my best to um, work with what I inherited to create the next budget while we also implement the systems and, and, and policies and procedures and, and additional institutional changes that's gonna allow us to be better for fiscal year 24. So it's gonna be a, a working progress. Um, uh, but again, everything that we do on that management front is gonna, impact greatly everything that we all love and care about as far as services is concerned. Mayor, what is the budget for next year? Not including the schools we're looking at. And again, these numbers changes every time the, the treasurer um, and the auditor updates the revenue receipts. Um, 69 million-ish. Um, including the schools, you're talking about 150, 160 million. And that's different in, in, because, you know, 90% of our school budget is supplemented through the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And then that difference is our net school spending. That's the, the, the city portion. And those numbers change because the house, um, you know, the state, they're still going through their budget process and I think this week if they haven't already or maybe next week I gotta look at the schedule um their schedule to convene and start um voting on what that what that budget's going to be so that number changes all the time so that's the thing with the budget is a moving target it's not black and white like in our own household mm -hmm. um there's so many different variables and they're very dependent on how you know what the com what our legislators do at the commonwealth of Massachusetts um and uh, their schedules don't align with our schedule when we're trying to put our budget together. So we have to guess what we think we might get. And then uh, we recon reconcile later. And, you know, it's a constant moving target. But my goal here between now and the next three, four years is to put us in a much more stronger position in projecting out what those numbers might be and that we're implementing the necessary safety measures to cover any surprises or any budget gaps. So again, so that we're protecting the tax rate. 
um, as much as possible. Um, okay. It's not the fun and the exciting stuff that people like to hear in an update, but again, believe me when I say this, how well we manage this is what impacts funding to the DPW to maintain our parks, um, uh, adequate funding to our police and fire to be sure that we're getting the response we need when we need it, um, uh, uh, funding we need um, for projects that are being worked on by our, our, our economic development office, our conservation department, um, our building department, uh, to keep up with proper enforcements in those areas, public health department. Uh, so when we're talking about enforcement in our ordinances, be it conditions of public of uh, uh, buildings uh, from private owners uh, to um, just uh, other safety enforcement issues, we have to, you know, they're all dependent on every dollar we can leverage that's available to the city. And if we're not managing that correctly and we're just kind of putting out fires all the time, then that, that's where the impact in services come in. That's where the impact in the rate comes in. So I know it's it's boring, but it's so critical in the in the in the health overall of, of the direction of the city.